Support WrestleTalk! Give us a subscribe. Mick Foley is returning for Hell in a Cell this weekend. I'm Ollie Davis. This is Luke Owen. Welcome to the Wrestle Ramble Raw Review Edition, where on Raw last night, Mick Foley's return was pre announced. Although, you know, usually when a legend comes back, it's to promote the Shawn Michaels, Undertaker, Triple H thing at Super Showdown. But no, this was for Hell in a Cell. Which I, you know, I knew was happening, but with evolution and Super Showdown and everything else happening, it's media kind of con. been media con. <laughs> it's kind of been lost in the WWE promotion shuffle, and this did feel a bit like a a hail mary last minute where someone goes, "Huh, it's twenty years since that Hell in a Cell match with Undertaker and Mankind. What's Foley doing?" And give him a call, and he comes along. And he cuts a, what I thought was an excellent promo. Really was a great promo, yeah. Uh, but yes, it's Foley announced that he'll be the special guest referee for Reigns versus Strowman. And it wasn't like Reigns versus Strowman was put in a Hell in a Cell just in a backstage segment. That wasn't that stipulation hadn't been announced already, had I it? I think it had. Oh, it had. I mean, very. I mean, I've been awake, so I don't know. But I assumed it had already been announced. In the same way, I think there's some confusion over whether or not Strowman has cashed in Money in the Bank to get the shots. He handed and over his briefcase. That, that's yeah, that's but, a true. But I've even seen some people say that wasn't the cash-in. He's just had to hand it over. And that hasn't... That's just So he's got a title shot, but he's going to get the briefcase back. No, as far as I understand it, this is a yes, cash-in. that's as what but I can understand. because heels are nefarious, maybe Strowman handing over the briefcase to Baron Corbin another heel yeah. was actually a ruse but it is as far as I can tell it it was announced as a Hell in a Cell match a couple of weeks ago mm. that'd actually be pretty good if Str- well, I don't want Strowman to lose but I think he is this Sunday uh, but you know in, in a month or two's time Roman's just lying down beaten at the end of a Raw or a pay-per-view and Strowman just walks down with the Money in the Bank briefcase and Baron Corbin and everyone's like oh my god <laughs> it was a swerve <laughs> Is that your impression of WWE fans? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, pretty yeah. good, yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I thought this was bizarre in the sense that this was like the third to last segment on the show. Because mm. it was this, then the Elias match, and then the Braun Roman segment right at the end. It was Bobby Lashley working out, <laughs> if you want to call that a segment. Yes. So this was like the third to last segment on the show. And... Just and Mick Foley was just like, it's been 20 years since that Hell in a Cell match, and I'm going to be the special guest referee. And then had no interactions with Roman or Braun. Braun mm. just happened to mention, I don't care that Mick Foley is the special guest referee, and that's it. So it's one of those really weird stipulations that they've just added in at the last minute that you would have thought if you'd announced this four weeks ago, you could have built a storyline around it. Totally. Built, built up this like Mick Foley and Hell in a Cell and how much like Hell in a Cell means to his career, how he you know made his career inside Hell in a Cell. He made the match infamous with that King of the Ring match from July 1998 with The Undertaker, and his career was ended by Triple H at No Way Out 2000 inside Hell in a Cell. Kind of. Kind of. But WWE rewrite history all the time. You can easily just say his career was ended. Yes. Officially at that. Officially at for the that first point. time. For the first time at that point. So you can like build all this thing mm. around it. Maybe build some angles between him and Strowman. Build some tension between him and Roman. Then when you go into the match, there's a storyline you can work around with Foley as the special guest referee in the scenario. But here it's just now nah, mix there, mate. By the pay per view. I completely agree. This is like this is a good idea. Great idea. Mick Foley in the like as the, the special guest referee for a Hell in a Cell match with Roman Reigns versus The Undertaker. Versus twenty for Braun Strowman. <laughs> Sorry. I get flashbacks every <laughs> I think now of WrestleMania and again. last year. Yeah. With twenty years after that famous match. That's like such a nice bit of poetic symmetry. And like you said, there's so many ways that can be interwoven into the storyline to make all this feel a lot more succinct. And not contrived, not like a, hey, buy the pay-per-view because this is also happening. I spoke to Stephanie. Yeah. Like, and she said fine. Like, actually, it will feel more like a proper storyline, which is unfolding. Like you would watch a, a drama and a narrative. Because you could have Foley going up to Roman saying, hey, you retired The Undertaker, sure. But that was, I guess you can't say that's The Undertaker of 2018 because... 
The Undertaker is always the Undertaker. Like, time has no effect on his abilities. Especially at Super Showdown, mm. which is coming up next month. Yes. And then you can say, yeah, but you beat The Undertaker. I, The Undertaker destroyed me. But Strowman is unlike nothing I've ever seen before. And you put yeah, over Strowman that way. You can have Strowman saying, like, what The Undertaker did to you 20 years ago at Hell in a Cell is nothing compared to what I'm going to do to Roman Reigns this Sunday. Yeah. Or, you know, in two Sundays from now. And if you get in my way, I'll do the exact same thing. I'll throw you off the cell again. I have no qualms doing that. I don't care. Built anything, really. Mm. But this was, it just feels like it was thrown to the last minute. Like, they just decided today. Ah, oh, Mick should be the special guest referee in that match. Yeah. And now it, it's, it just seems like a really pointless addition, well, which, is I, a, which is a shame. So not a pointless addition. It's just like it's an addition where a lot has been left on the table. A redundant There's So addition. much potential yes, with this. exactly. Uh, but what a promo from Foley. So good. Because unfortunately, the last time we saw Mick Foley was him being emasculated by Stephanie McMahon from 2016 through to 2017, first Raw GM of the brand split. And... It, it was really tough because I love Foley. He was like, he was just my guy when mm-hmm. I was growing up as a kid. I wanted to, because he was, the, Colt Cabana spoke about this at Wrestling Media Con. He was like, he, he would see Cabana throw himself, sorry, see Foley do all that backyard wrestling stuff. And he'd be like, hey, not everyone's larger than life. That's what I do. That, he's like me. Yeah. And that you get behind in that way. And that's a huge part of Foley's success. And. To, to, see, to, to have seen him just be chipped away and play second fiddle to Stephanie and, you know, those, like, forgetting lines. It's, it was just, it was so horrible to see. But occasionally, he would go, OK, I'm going to cut an excellent promo, even if the content isn't necessarily there. I remember when Cesaro and Sheamus were first in that best of seven feud. And he went crazy. Just, you need to get together. You need to become a tag team. I see something in you both. I'm like... I don't believe what you're saying because this is. I think it. Was, I did. I wasn't into that storyline. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it was a hell of a performance. Yeah. And Mick just went from zero to t- like crying in in 20 seconds. And that's kind of what happened here. He just came out and he was so so emotionally driven. Yeah. Uh, and all he he was only really playing off Elias. Yeah, and it was. I, the use of Elias, I guess, was because, apparently, Elias was there for that King of the Ring match. It was in his hometown. That's what he said in this promo, which is like, I was there. I watched you get thrown off that cell. So I guess that's why they had him do the promo with Elias. But at the same time, Elias has got now to do... A, he hasn't got a match at Hell in a Cell. And B, he's got now to do with the Universal Championship match between Roman and Braun. So it just seems weird that Foley was like, and here is where I'm going to reveal that I'm the special guest referee. Like, yeah. Not even to break up a fight between Braun and Roman. It's just, and that's why I feel like it... I don't, pointless is a, such a, a harsh word to use because, hey man, I like Mick. You know, I like Foley. And him being a special guest referee is, you know, it should be a big thing. But it feels pointless. And as, as I said, that is a harsh word to use, but it feels pointless because it, it was made an announcement in the third to last segment before the end of the show. And in, in a segment that had nothing to do with either man who's actually at the show or in the match. I, th- I think pointless is is the wrong word redundant I, like ineffective ineffective go yeah, on let's because, go with that yeah because Pit, you know, it's, potato, to- potato. it's totally a point uh, but like yeah you were, you were so close to that last segment <laughs> where all the guys in the match were <laughs> just, just you know just, just have wait, it there just wait a little bit Mick uh, I, as you're right I was fully expecting him to interrupt uh, Triple H when he did his promo because mm-hmm. they announced like Triple H is going to cut a promo again uh, about The Undertaker because we haven't seen that yet in the build up for this match that's I not think happening yet it's a hell of a build though well, I, it's, I'm it's had, loving it, the Undertaker Triple it's H It's had build. more build than anything at Hell in a Cell. Like, they're so much more interested in that match than they are anything else on the in the company at the like, moment. WWE, you finally get it right, and you do it for the the, the wrong thing right now. It's Actually, that and that, that's unfair. They're also really interested in the Bella Twins. Like, yes. That, they're also really building that match that they're going to have at Super Showdown mm-hmm. as well with Ronda, and we'll get on to that. Yeah. Um, so those are the two things they're really interested in at the moment, and those are the two things they're really pushing. Uh, just one more thing on the Foley thing. This was the night of video packages. <clears throat> yep. I, I was frustrated with them. I thought they slowed down the show. I totally get that you want to promote your your pay-per-view, but do it in a more dynamic way that doesn't feel like a pre-show. And this should be like the hot go-home all action. No video, Not as many video packages, at least. However, the, the video package they had advertising Foley's appearance later on with the Hell in a Cell recap and you know, the interview with Terry Funk, I was like, oh, 
God, I love this. It was it was really <laughs> good. So good. I, I mean, I will disagree with the video packages though, because I I've complained many times on these shows and and in general life that they do the video packages on the pay per views themselves or on the kickoff shows. Like it's a bit late now. Like you mm. should should have shown these on Raw and SmackDown to try and build some interest in them. So actually, I thought the video packages were ace. I thought they did a much a really good effective job in making you a want to watch SmackDown, which yeah. Not as many people do. It does have a smaller audience than Raw does. And B makes you want to uh, see Hell in a Cell. Well, should we talk about the whole show? Haha, <laughs> it's a Raw review looking jacked, man. Raw opened with McDolphman coming out. Nice. With their, so this is Drew McIntyre, Dolph Ziggler and Braun Strowman. They've got a name now. Have they? Yeah, they, oh, they, the... they, they said it about a thousand times in this promo and then on commentary. The dogs of war. So they're the dogs of war, yeah. or are all the heels the dogs of war? No, uh, Braun says that these two in particular and him are the dogs of war. The big dogs of war. Well, and big. then you've got the puppies of war outside, <laughs> yeah. the Yorkshire Terrier yes. of war. So, you yeah, know, they're the dogs of war. Right. Well, they. So this is, you know. But the... <laughs> I don't know. Oh, wait, they're, they're a Franken team. They are here because the Shield need opponents. Yeah, like that's the only reason this team exists. And it is, it is very transparent. And it's, it's every time they come out, I'm reminded because it like with Dolphin Drew, anyway, that never like apart from their tag team move set. I still feel like they're a Franken team. Oh no, I don't. I, I totally bought them as a team because they, when they debuted and Dolph brought drew up from um, NXT, and like their whole shtick was just that you guys have got, you know, we're going to run this show now. And Dolph's whole thing has always been about like shooting on the fans and being like, "Hey, you guys don't care about me. I'm so much better than any of you give me credit for." And then you got Drew as well. I always thought that actually as a team and as a unit, they worked really well together. Even with the record scratch. I. We'll never get over the record scratch because yeah. it is one of the worst parts of uh, their their act. Well, I'm for me, I'm still like Drew and Dolph is just a little package to get Drew over, and eventually Dolph will Thanos away again. Uh, so I, for me, I I still feel like they're a bit of a Franken team, and then to add Braun Strowman on there, that's even more like contrived. And when they all came out at the start to open Raw, they line up at the top of the ramp to Braun's music that's playing. Braun looks to Drew, looks to Dolph, powers up, and they all do the Braun roar at the same time. And we both went, that was a bit lame. That was totally lame. And I, <laughs> I thought this was the first time they'd done it. But only in getting some images for the news from last week's roar, they did it there as well. And I was like, I totally don't remember them doing it there. But it is lame. Yeah. It is super lame. But what's even lamer uh, is the, and it's just lazy writing. They come down to the ring and they are followed by. I guess all the heels from Raw, Authors of Pain were out there. Kurt Hawkins was out there. Drew Gulak again. Drew, was he? Yeah, Drew Gulak was. I spotted him. Uh, Jinder Mahal. Yeah, uh, Sunil Singh. And, and they're all coming out. And then there's Kevin Owens at the back. And I'm like, it's it's like WWE are telling you, here's our main feud. It's it's Mac McDolphman and The Shield. And the various combinations of those matches. And then you've got the run the Ra- whoever Ronda Rouse is facing. Nothing else matters. Everyone else is subservient and can take a break from whatever intense blood feud they're working in to come and be props for other feuds. And that's that. Uh, it's, it's problematic for everything, Authors of Pain and Kevin Owens in particular, but really for Kevin Owens. Uh, yeah. they've, although he did some work to. To, to, to make ground back on just returning last week with his explanation later. I, it's, it sucks. Uh, the Authors of Pain is another one, and you mentioned them there, that like later on in the show they had another squash match where like, oh, the Authors of Pain are so destructive, they're so dominant. I was like, well, they, were just, they had their asses kicked by the shield earlier in the night, so I don't think they're that destructive and dominant. It's like a three-on-one man advantage <laughs> that the big heel team had yeah, against the like shield. 25 of them out there, and the shield just came down and were like, none of you guys matter. What they needed, Luke, was four police officers. <laughs> That that's the shield. Like they just get a nasty stare, yeah. some stink eye, and then the shield will leave raw. Yeah. So I, I said in my review, it's 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 really like the Chitari from Marvel or any of the Marvel movies where you have a big army of faceless, like minions. Yeah. And it's purely so all the the Avengers can beat the crap out of them. 
loads. Yes. And so you, you get loads of big set pieces and spots. And so you don't makes... have the Avengers just fighting Loki. They've got an army they can fight yeah. beforehand. And they do it in a lot of... Like, they kind of set the template Marvel and then every other sort of, like, big Hollywood movie has kind of copied that. It's like, The Mummy did it and Power Rangers did it with the Putty Patrol. Obviously, they, had, they did it first way back when, but they did it there. Justice League did it with their, their guys as well. So it has become this sort of staple that, yeah, you just have to... Uh, this faceless army for your good guys to beat up until they get to the final boss. Mm. And that's what they did here. Yeah, yeah. And it, it just... It shows that the heels on Rora are no more than hot bodies to be beaten down by the shield for spots. Yeah. It's it's a real waste, and it will condition audiences to not take those people seriously Absolutely. if you keep doing it. Yeah. Anyway, after this, Baron Corbin tells the shield to vacate the premises, and some yeah four police officers are there looking like... I guess developmental talent. <laughs> well, and the, uh, so the the argument was that like if you don't leave the premises now and if you don't interrupt the show further, I'm going to strip Roman of the Universal Championship and I'm going to strip Seth of the Intercontinental Championship. And then they were like, all right, well, that'll do. Because they came down with um, axe handles. Because if there's one thing you want to do when you're being dangerous, it's to take off the dangerous part of a weapon. Oh, I don't want that. And just, <laughs> you don't well, want to, I mean, you don't want to hurt people. Well, I mean, in, in the axe handles defense, you... you you want to, in the confines of a wrestling show, you want, you want to hurt people, you don't want to kill them. Well, then don't have axes, then. Like, don't use axe handles, just use baseball bat or something like that. It just, so. it just seemed really, like, an, a woodsman wouldn't go, like, I'm just going to take this, the axe bit off this because I, I don't want to hurt anything. But they're trying to chop down a tree. I, I understand, but I, I'm not saying the answer to rectify that is to leave the axe handles on. <laughs> no, well, I'm not. My answer to it is don't use axes or axe handles. Yeah. Just use weapons steel chairs baseball kendo bad, sticks kendo sticks anything like that they got you, well, well the world of wrestling is full of loads of weapons that you can use the wrestle talk magazine <laughs> that is exclusively for sammy callahan though no 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 i'm trying to make it the official paper what? weapon of wrestling <laughs> uh, for anyone who doesn't know at the impact shows at the weekend the main event was sammy callahan versus jimmy havoc in a barbed wire baseball bat death match and one of the spots was Sammy Callahan gets out the Wrestle Talk magazine. Crucially, from an Asda bag for life, because we yeah. were we were there popping because he had an Asda bag for life. I didn't see he had the magazine, <laughs> and then he pulled the magazine out. And we were like, "It's the Wrestle Talk magazine!" And then he yells, "Support, Support. Wrestle Talk!" Gets out, uh, like rips some pages out. You know, it's a collector's item. He shouldn't have done that. And gets the, uh, uh, the staple, staple gun. gun and staples him to Jimmy's arms and head. It was fantastic. It was funny. Uh, I've forgotten where I was. I was I was back at MediaCon for a moment there, living <laughs> we're, in Anglory. We're still on a bit of our come down from, yeah. from MediaCon. Oh, re- like a genuine come down. I yeah. feel exhausted. I mean, you were you slept through your alarm this morning because yeah, you're yeah. still so tired from it. Well, yesterday I didn't really sleep even overnight because I still had loads of adrenaline through me. I'm not used to be doing anything in front of loads of people. Uh, but yes, back to back to the show. We'll talk about that more on the podcast. Mm. Uh, so next up, we got Nikki Bella versus Ruby Riot. Well, before oh, that, sorry. we saw earlier in the day the Bella Twins walk into their uh, locker yeah. room that had been oh, defaced by the Riot Squad. They'd written two things on the wall. It was it was insanity what they did. What a riot! I know. I'd like it's it's a safe version of a riot, but I, I would get a kick if they walked in there and it was like f the Bellas, <laughs> like. Some John Cena jokes, a big yeah. penis, and yeah, yeah like a pro- proper toilet graffiti. Yeah, when it was just like Nikki smells, and yeah. like it, it wasn't fear less; it was like fear more. Mm. And it was like it was really, really rubbish. Yeah, rubbish graffiti. Someone should have just done a big dump in the middle <laughs> of that room in a sandwich, and just says like, <laughs> like sort of Alice in Wonderland logo, eat me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like, it was it was very lame. Attitude era, here's that dick in your face. Yeah. Now era, here's here's some like slightly mean words on a wall in I, your face. I didn't make this comment last week, and it was kind of like explained a little bit this week. But do you know why why were the shield arrested last week? The official uh, reason they were given was for inciting a riot. And I said to myself, <laughs> it's what the riot squad do every week, isn't it? Why aren't they arrested? No, they're trying to. <laughs> it was attempt to incite a riot I would never say it actually goes to riot plan they do sometimes push over bins yeah or cut a man's tie off yeah well I mean let's not go too far they're just trying to incite a mild like confrontation I I feel confrontation seems too strong mild confrontation squad yeah Yeah. like if if the if the riot squad were at high school there would be bullies that bullied them oh yes yeah totally uh 
Also, big shout out to the Bella's Act team on uh, <laughs> on <laughs> seeing these, you know, these really offensive words on the wall. Uh, it was like, to be fair, like it was a mild attempt at a confrontation. Yeah, and they they received it appropriately. <laughs> they reacted. They're like, oh, they reacted. That's not nice. They walked in and like, oh, this is a bit. I mean, I might have to pay for that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, put a deposit down on this room mm. to change. Actually, no, it's the venue's responsibility. WWE yeah. will cover it. Yeah, I think we'll, we'll probably, uh, we should be fine. Yeah, yeah. It'll be okay. But that big dump in the middle of the room is, <laughs> is starting to smell. Yeah, that is really bad. I was, I was looking forward to that subway. So, but to be fair, uh, you know, the the Bellas are just really getting on my nerves. Not for, not as people, but just the way they've been inserted into everything since SummerSlam. Very, very uh, crudely so. Mm. Uh, this was this was fine. This was I yeah. really like Ruby Riot. Yeah, uh, I actually Bell thought was this fine. was a a solid match. Like there was nothing wrong with it. It was better than the tag match yeah. they had last week. Nikki is the better of the two, I would mm-hmm. say. I agree. And um, yeah, I thought this was broadly fine. And the commentary just spent more time talking about how awesome the Bellas are and how successful they are outside of WWE because that is why they're getting a push. Is because they're they've got a wine or something, they've got a clothing or something, they've got a YouTube, they've a got an baby. Instagram, they're two reality shows. So like, it, it's so clear. Vince McMahon is just like, God damn, they're great. Yeah. Look how awesome they are outside of what we did for them. God, let's just let's push them to the moon. That's why Ronda's you know the champion. It's and indicative of someone who hates wrestling <laughs> runs the world's largest exactly. wrestling promotion. You know, he said it, he's been saying it for 20, nearly 30 years now. We're not a wrestling show. We're an entertainment show. He thinks that Raw is a variety show. Mm. It's it's variety at the Royal Albert Hall. And that is what he presents every week. So it's it's no it stands to reason why Nikki Bella is always winning and why they're pushed this. And that was so Nikki wins this match. It goes like a you know fairly decent amount of Through time. Through a commercial Through break. Through a commercial time. And Nikki wins. And my first thought at the end of this is like, why should I care about them facing at Super Showdown? Like at the start of this match, I was like, well, Ruby's got to win, right? Because the tag match, like the Bellas won the tag match last week. So if Ruby gets a win over Nikki, that's a big win for Ruby there, considering how much they're putting over the mm. Bella twins. That does a lot for Ruby, does a lot for the Riot Squad, and it builds some intrigue into their match at Super Showdown, where the Bellas are teaming with Ronda Bloody Rousey. But yet the Bella twins are winning in a three-on-two handicap at the moment. The Bloody Riot Squad interfered in the match, and Nikki still won handedly. And... And I was like, now you've got to tell a man what they're going to do at Super Showdown when they have the women's champion and the baddest woman on the planet on their side. Yeah. Like, why could anyone care? Why should we be invested in this? Well, I I suppose uh, Super Showdown will set up an angle uh, where Nikki maybe turns on Ronda. Yeah, but that, that's to fine. Set up that evolution match. That's but grand. I, I, I've yeah, no problem with that, say. but then, like, I don't care about the match that precedes that. I totally agree. Uh, after that, we got a. A very nice Connor the Crusher segment. This was very where, nice. Yeah, where Big Show was on stage and he had a lot of uh, people who had su- survived paediatric cancer. I do or were, not, I do not like in. crying at 5 a.m. <coughs> when I get up to watch this show, but then it's ended up what happened here because I, man, you bring out kids who are very ill. Like I, the, 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 like that Connor the Crusher video package. Oh, yeah. I remember the one they did for when he was like the Hall of Fame one. Yeah. Oof, man, I was alive. making a bolognese at the time and the, the onions. Um, <laughs> But yeah, this was lovely, uh, yeah. and Big Show, <laughs> Big Show got them a cheap pop. Because <laughs> he said, by the way, they're all from Louisiana. <laughs> yeah, like everyone was like, oh, that's nice. Oh, they're from here! <laughs> yes! <laughs> so that was, that was fun. <laughs> I didn't care previously, but now I do. But again, like as lovely as this is, they should really be used for angles. <laughs> like who's running in and beating them down? You still want Kevin Owens to powerbomb one of them off the stage, don't you? He's responsibility free. <laughs> he's going to say he wouldn't get in trouble for you it. Know, like what I saw is Super Four, Braden the Punisher, Diva Supreme. But like they, they just part timers. <laughs> they come in, they get put over to the moon. Yep. Big Show endorses them. I mean, they're Who, essentially- what stars are they getting over? Essentially, they're the kid version of the Bellas. Yeah, they're not going to be here next week. <laughs> It's very sweet. It's very sweet. Being, it's lovely. Being facetious. Yeah, totally. Uh, Shawn Michaels, uh, Undertaker, and Triple H got a video package recapping previous week. There's a lot of video packages. Then we got the Authors of Pain B team. Uh, well, then, first off, it was Drake Drake Maverick backstage. Yeah, they're, they're them not up. the Authors of Pain anymore. Oh, did I miss that? They're just they're just called AOP now. 
So like their name bar says AOP, oh. Drake Maverick refers to them as AOP, and the commentators only ever called them AOP. So it seems like the Authors of Pain has been shortened to simply just AOP, which is so less cool than the Authors of Pain. So less cool. Why? Like, why, why can't they just... They kid, can use both. Kids haven't got off. time to remember three words. They've got like hashtags to do and stuff. You need to shorten this down. It's like when Green Arrow was just called Arrow. And this show is like, Green Arrow takes up too much Twitter time. You've got to just do hashtag AOP. Yeah, there's a... Well, Twitter have increased the character limit. Authors of Pain is still too long, man. <sighs> well, anyway, uh, Drake Maverick psychs them up backstage. And he's not... Hopefully, we're going to see week by week he'll, he'll be wearing less... <laughs> A uh, few fewer items of Authors of Pain cosplay and more his own gear, which yeah. is that fantastic suit. Because he didn't have the jacket on, but he did have the sort of camo trousers and a vest. Yeah, Drake um, tweeted in the week because a lot of people were obviously making fun of him, bec- and for right, you know, for every right reason as well, because he did look ridiculous in that outfit. And he did tweet like, "Anyone who thinks that I look ridiculous in this outfit is clearly wrong." And I thought to myself, "Well, Vince McMahon clearly thought you looked ridiculous because you weren't in it this week, were you?" Yeah. Well, no, I think. If Vince did think he looked ridiculous, he'd keep it on him <laughs> every keep week. Doing it. But you see Drake's it's, it's uh, cover new photo. Twitter cover it's profile. It's so yeah. funny. It's amazing because it is the Authors of Pain, and you can just see the top of his head. <laughs> <laughs> I think, considering what happened later, I think WWE are finally like, we're paying all the 205 Live guys, and mm, like. No one's really watching them. Maybe we're not getting the money back that we're investing. So. Let's just start pairing them up with very large people because they're small, right? They're smaller guys than the, the, the bigger stars we've got. So it, it'll make the big stars look even bigger. You've got Drake Maverick, who's quite short, with the huge Authors of Pain or AOP. And then later, you've got Leo Rush with the huge Bobby Lashley. Yeah, 205 Live like oftentimes doesn't crack the top 10 things watched that week. In fact, old pay-per-views will sometimes outrank to a five life on a weekly basis. Uh, so yeah, so maybe they are just looking and going like, we're paying these guys a lot of money to essentially do nothing for us mm. because their tours aren't selling. No one watches the show. No one's invested in watching the show. Let's, let's have them do something. And the show, the matches are really, really good. It's such a Amazing, shame. Amazing, yeah. But yeah, it looks like it's going to turn into manager developmental. <laughs> yep, pretty much. Uh, yeah, but the Authors of Pain beat some jobbers, some local enhancement talent here. One of them looked like he was an albino, hmm. which was a fun look. And Super Collider, love the Super Collider. Great finish. I hope they just have... Let's just get through this this weird few weeks of multiple shows, and then as soon as Survivor Series build hits, Authors of Pain go into a proper program. Yes, That's what let's I hope say. So. Uh, Randy Orton, Jeff Hardy video package, the same one we saw on SmackDown last week. Yep. Then Triple H arrives in a very long limo. Well, backstage. of course, he is. he's a star. Mm. Everyone else doesn't get that treatment. Walks Kevin Owens has a rental car. <laughs> walks past the police officers who are still standing there from throwing out the shield earlier on and just smirks. <laughs> uh, <talk. laughs> you have no authority yeah. over me. I gay. am the authority. Uh, he walks into the ring and he talks about... I, I like this promo. I thought he lost his way a bit at the oh, start. Yeah? I felt like he said... Uh, like Undertaker was scared three or four times, but just changed the order of the words around. And it wasn't scared was the Undertaker. Yeah. And it wasn't like the way where you just do it to drive home a point. It was the way where I'm stalling for time until my mind can remember what the next bit is. Which is a skill that Shane McMahon probably could have learned as opposed yeah. to just standing there blank and like, please help me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's my line? Duly noted. Um <laughs> Okay, are they, are the crowd going to keep chanting? Are they going to let me talk? Uh, but yeah, I thought this was a good promo. Yes. He said that like that you know all these legends were talking about like who's going to win, and of course they all said the Undertaker. But like that opinion doesn't bother me because they're all wrong. But one person who was rattled by one person's opinion was the Undertaker. So rattled was the Undertaker by Shawn Michaels' opinion, he showed up to Raw and he showed up and he confronted uh, Shawn Michaels about it. I, I love I love this yeah. idea because Triple H is that what happened last week where Undertaker looked so cool because he was like I'm gonna retire you, like you've stayed retired because you're scared of me Shawn Michaels and I'm gonna bury Triple H as well 
awesome. But what Triple H does, he comes out here, he flips that whole dynamic on its head by saying everything Undertaker talked about was actually from an insecure place yeah. in The Undertaker. And you're like, oh, that's a fascinating idea. He only showed up because he's scared. Yeah, and he had this amazing line as well with some brilliant WWE rewriting of history. He was like, we had that four-match series with The Undertaker and effectively all of his mystique was gone. The streak died, and the streak died two years later. Yeah. But the streak died after that four-year series and you've never been special since. And that's all down to me and Sean. Mm. That's a great bit of line. I like that. I he's going to put The Undertaker down for good. Yeah, this is very, very good. Very good. Um, I think the build for this match has been brilliant. I, I just wish it they did this more often for current stars, current stars on proper pay-per-views. Yes. But uh, yeah, I think I think But you know what? You good. just ask too much. Hey. You demand too much from this company sometimes. They give me good stuff and I'm like, yeah, but I wanted it this way. <laughs> uh, Dolph Ziggler and Drew McIntyre had their tag team title rematch against the B team after this. Automatic rematch clause. Yep. Uh, you, and this is like the like I, I said this at the weekend. It's the wet fart after after a, a big poo, I guess. I, no, that's the wrong way. <laughs> Because oh god! I don't know. That's a disgusting analogy. Yeah. Is this what they do on Cultaholic? Is this what you're allowed to say yeah, on their channel? Got a potty mouth after <laughs> talking to Ross. Uh, no, it was. It's just like it's just such a damp epilogue. No, it to is. When, yeah. when the story's already wrapped up, the title change happened. That was hot. But oh, let's just have a rematch from the the last week. So oh, okay, we're gonna see B Team kind of hold their own again. Yeah. Uh, uh, and yep, yeah, uh, Axel's worked over from the start. Dallas, Bo Dallas got a brief hot tag that was really good for about five seconds, and then it's back to Drew and Dolph working him over again. Yeah, um, and they they hit their claymore zigzag and retained. I'm calling it the Zigmore. Zigmore works, yeah. Yeah, I, like I mean they the don't have a name for it; they just call it the claymore and zigzag. This was all a, a just filler to set up Dean and Seth running in afterwards and they attack them and Baron is furious backstage he's like I banned I dismissed the shield from Raw I was going to strip you of your titles if you came back and Seth and Dean are like we're not the shield we're Dean we're just Dean and Seth yeah and and then Corbin has this amazing line goes like that's just semantics yeah which is great Uh, and but he's he's right though it's like oh yeah the shield are really badass aren't they Getting around it on technicalities. <laughs> um, yeah, and he's like Corbin slips here and sort of alludes to the fact that he was the one who got them arrested last week. But it's like, oh no, I didn't. I didn't say it like that. And Seth wants to know who was it that got them arrested last week. So I wonder if is this now a storyline that they're going to tell over the next few weeks of who got the Shield arrested last week on Raw? Um, although, to be honest, really, my big question out of this was just like, what happened to the revival? Like the revival, oh, yeah. like the revival had a tag team title shot last week against the B team, and then they got beaten up by Mackendolf, mm. and then we're not here next week to get their like to get their revenge, and they're not on the pay per view either because Dean and Seth are getting the title shot. So what's gonna happen? What's happened to the revival? There's bigger stars. Well, I There's guess so. Yep, yeah, I guess so. Uh, yeah, they uh, th- th- this this went into a fun skit. I'm going to say it was fun because I did enjoy it where Seth like brings on uh, the local sheriff because he accuses Corbin of falsifying a, yeah, falsifying a police report. And he's like, oh, well, you know, you did that. So maybe the sheriff can help us out. And this was just like the Shield's way of getting the upper hand again. And then they like Ambrose and the police chief walk outside and they have a thing. And, and Dean quite funnily, but like funnily says uh, next. what What is speeding? Is yeah. there like a suggested speed in? Because I need to get places fast. And then he said, next time I'm arrested, I'll, I can give you a call, right? But although that is funny, I don't really want Goofy Shield. I was going to say, this was stepping into that line of Wacky Dean again. And I thought we got rid of Wacky Dean when he made his return and he was all super serious and mm. shaved headed and that. But it wasn't full on wacky. It but wasn't it's just like, full on wacky. It's but like it, it's a dangerous step. That's what stone. I mean. Yeah, there's yeah. a there's a fine line that he can often fall into, and this is WWE. They could go and just fall right back into wacky Dean mode. Uh, and I just thought, like, oh Seth, I know he's the architect, but oh Seth's like, yeah. By the way, I'm an expert at law now. <laughs> yeah. Here's the police chief got us out of prison last week. Like, I just that this isn't the character. This isn't what the Shield are. 
So they're the hounds of justice. Yeah, like, but that's too like they're meant to be vigilante, not <laughs> working very closely with the authorities. I don't know. Batman worked very closely with the vigi- uh, with the uh, the police. So and this guy, vigilante. this sheriff, is Gordon. Is Gordon, right? Yeah, and, yeah. and Seth is Batman. Okay, I would just I would just prefer it if uh, WWE understood Dean their is, own anti-establishment characters more. Dean is Robin. Mm-hmm. And I guess Roman is Barbara. Barbara no, Gordon? Roman's Batman. No, De- see, Seth's the leader. He's clearly no, Batman. Roman's Batman. No. Roman's Bane. I don't know. Roman's <laughs> everyone. Uh, All of them wrapped up into one. Roman's Superman. What are we talking <laughs> oh, yeah, about? Yeah, maybe he is yeah. Superman. Absolutely, yeah. Helena Cell recap from uh, 20 years ago, yep. that, which was that tremendous video package. It was just, awesome just with incredible. Terry Funk being, you know, using Terry Funk in there. These were all old interviews anyway, because you had Jericho on there with his old haircut. Um, but it was still, it was you know, good use of those old interviews. Very much so. Then we got uh, another video package of Kevin Owens returning last week to attack Bobby Lashley after that hot one-week absence after quitting, which was, you know, very annoying. And he's got a match here against Tyler Breeze. They split this up at, like, they interspersed a few segments into this. Like, Kevin Owens came out for the match, and then they did all of that Shield stuff Mm. and the video package. So I thought, man, Kevin's been out there for a long old time waiting for this match. Yeah, and I I like that. I like when they set up a thing, and then, like, oh, we're going to go to this other thing, because it makes the viewer more complex, and, you know, like, you're you're cross-cutting between action, which is is Mm -hmm. very good for creating tension. But I I felt they're doing it... This was wrong. (laughs) This is, like... (laughs) I, I like the concept, but this was uh, incorrect execution of it. Yeah. But uh, Kevin Owens comes out. Tyler Breeze comes out for a match. Uh, NXT's Tyler Breeze at the moment. Well, yeah, he is. Had yeah. a few matches down there. As is Luke Harper at the moment. He challenged mm. for the NXT Championship. Um, uh, no, it, North American Championship. It was a North American yeah, Championship. Yeah, yeah, okay. um, but yeah, this was um, Breeze coming out. And like Cole even called him Prince Pretty. So yeah. and he didn't have the Fandango version of the music. He just had his own version of the music, with complete with the proper intro and everything like that. And I was like, "Yeah, let's use this guy. He's very good." I never thought I'd prefer the Breeze Fandango mashup more. But no, now, well, oh. but when it, when it what, you know, there's the intro and yeah. then it goes. Da, 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 da. I can't shake that now. <laughs> That's in my head. I like it. Yeah, it's you and memes mm. that just have that stuck in your head all the time. Um, but uh, Kevin Owens hacked uh, Breeze as he was making his entrance, and then he did the power bomb onto the apron spot, and then cut, as you would expect from Kevin Owens, a very very good promo. Kevin Owens is one of the few guys in this company. Joe's another one of them yes. that can take these like yeah, kind of yeah, yeah. take scripted material but make it sound like it's off the cuff. He's very, very good at that. Makes it sound more natural than just reading words off a page. There was one line in particular where he was like, uh, you know, aggression. He listed three words, like three A's of Raw that he's going to bring to it. And yeah. I was like, that is such a crappy WWE line. But you don't even notice it's a crappy WWE line yeah. because Kevin Owens delivered it so well. It was a good promo with that line aside, but very good content because he, he explains that he left Raw... But Baron Corbin was on the phone to him, begging him to come back. You're such a big star, yada, yada, yada. And Owens is like, I'll only come back if I can... I'm not responsible for what I do to people. I can do whatever I please. Yeah. He's not being held accountable for anything that he does now. And he says he's going to run roughshod all over Raw. And he's going to start with Bobby Lashley. Because Bobby Lashley was the one who injured his best friend, Sami Zayn. Yes, if it wasn't for Lashley, my best friend would be at my yeah. side right now. And it's just a shame that there was that Kevin Owens Braun Strowman feud in the mix of all of this. Because if you went from Sammy Lashley straight into Owens Lashley, you wouldn't have all the problematic stuff of Owens being fed as a comedy jobber to Braun. And you could go you could turn a real life injury into something quite quite a hot blood feud. Yep. Uh, hopefully that's where they go now. Um and th- so this to me seems like they're going to transition Owens into a more like his prize fighter gimmick. Mm. And but I've been burnt too much. <clears throat> yep. And I feel like it's actually all going to end with him being fed to Lashley. Oh, one hundred percent. That's where it's going. Yeah. yeah. We're going to get another one. Like, hey, you remember his match at SummerSlam? I mean, it's easy to forget because it was a blink and you'll miss it match against Braun. We're more or less going to get the same sort of thing with Lashley. It feels. Oh, I, you know, I hope not. Um, oh, but Lash, just, Lash has got a new manager now. Yeah, it's just WWE. Uh, they're, they're, they're very good at setting things up sometimes, but there's a track record of, of really missing stuff out, particularly yeah. with 
a certain group of guys that you want to get behind, and Owens is one of them. So although this is good, I just I, I I'm struggling to enjoy it because I've just got the doom of what might happen hanging over it. My man, my man. <laughs> I'm enjoying that now. I did, I tore it to shreds last week. I said I didn't enjoy it, but we've. I think this is much it, of. We enjo- have made ourselves enjoy it. Much of finding joy in WWE as an adult is making your own fun. Yeah, and that's what my man has become. I I even like it when Lashley says it later. Yeah. He nearly just breaks Leo Rush's back when he taps him on the shoulder. Yeah, so a bit of context. When we were driving to our um, uh, dance lessons, that's all we did. We just came up with different versions of My Man, the three of us, and we were making ourselves laugh. And now when I hear My Man, it just makes me think of that car ride. Yeah. And now I'm enjoying it. It's because we were driving and we were talking about how stupid it is, but we got stuck behind this van. (laughs) And we're like, my van! And then it just like we just went on from there like my fan, <laughs> my ham, my dad, and it was uh, yeah, yeah, it's very good. So we like that. Yeah, uh, we think got- we want to get that over by the way. So if you're still watching, start commenting my <laughs> whatever as long as it rhymes with man. Yeah, it's gonna rhyme like with man. man yeah. yeah. Um, we got a video package for AJ and Joe, and this is my first time of seeing the Ooh Wendy thing. And it's the first time, and this was actually pointed out to me over WrestleMediaCon weekend. By that, Datsun, yeah. By Andy Datsun, that you've been saying it wrong this whole time. I've been saying it right in my gimmick. <laughs> like you said in the review, this is exactly what he said, but you said it wrong. I, did, I never said this is exactly what he said. I just said he opened with... Ooh, Wendy. But that's not what he opened with. It's Ooh, Wendy. I know. <laughs> Ooh, Wendy. That's not what yeah. you do. I know it's your not what ver- I do. Your version is funnier. Yeah. But it's just it was weird because this was my first time seeing it. And I was like, oh, Ollie's been doing this wrong. Ollie's been <laughs> doing it how Ollie wants to do it. <laughs> This is so funny, because Andy Dadson, our, our website writer, when he was at Wrestling Medicon, was a little bit upset by the whole thing. He's yeah. like, every time I see it, it drives me nuts because he's doing it wrong. He struggled to let it go, and that's <laughs> only did. going to make me do it more. <laughs> <laughs> and Bobby, he made me laugh. Bobby Roode and Chad Gable beat yep. The Ascension next, which was good. I like Roode and Gable. Love this I team. like them winning. Yeah. We had this same thing last week, though. Give them a new team. Yeah, was it the Ascension they beat last yes. week? Yes. Oh, okay, sorry, I forgot. What's the point? I forgot which team they beat. Yeah, remember they the Ascension did that awkward promo. Oh, before... that's right. Yeah, we called him like a duck butt or something. Yes. A sword off duck butt. Uh, but there, there was it was an interesting layup to the match. Chad Chad gets most of it and he's worked over a bit. Hot tags Bobby. Bobby runs wild for a bit. Just as he's setting up for the glorious DDT, Chad tags himself in blind tag. Hits Chaos Theory for the win. What's he call Doug's Chaos Theory? I don't know. I, I mean, I just I always write Chaos Theory in my notes. It's a rolling German. The rolling German uh, in the corner, pin, yeah. Which is just awesome. It's such watch. a great move. Yeah. Uh, and I didn't think anyone could do it as good as Doug Williams. And mm. It turns out I was wrong because Chad Gable's very, very good at professional wrestling. Well, I guess being shorter, does that help you out more? Oh, I would have thought so. Yeah, because yeah, it probably helps with the roll through. Yeah. Uh, but... Bobby Bobby essentially got blind tagged out of his spot, which is usually used to create dissension. But he didn't. He looked like a bit confused for a second, but he was immediately very happy that Chad had won the match yeah. for them. So nice seeds of potentially where they might be going with this. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would just, you know, vary the competition. Well, what other competition have they got? I suppose there's Titus Worldwide. The Revival, Titus Worldwide, Heath Slater and Rhino. Oh, he's it's not Rhino. stellar competition, but yeah, you don't have to have them face the same people all the time yeah d- d- a franken team mojo rawley and jinder yo you don't want to bury jinder <laughs> and mojo do you we're giving them pushes Good point. i think remember when mojo had that push on rawley beat um no way jose for like 12 weeks in a row and bobby they had a little feud i don't know <laughs> uh then we got a e people's choice awards little vignette <sighs> yeah it, I'm, uh, I don't know, mate. I, I, I zoned out on this bit a little bit. It, it just it seemingly went on for a long time, but I proper zoned out. So WWE are nominated for three categories, and they ran through all the nominees in these categories. I think it was... Uh, they started off with Best Reality Star, Nikki Bella. Oh, oh no. Actually, I suppose and, she won. And then they had Best Game Changer of 2018. Ronda? Nia Jax. No, What? <laughs> In terms of what? What game has she changed? She changed, see, she changed the game in your snares. No, like, no, no. What no. game is she changing? You see, Luke, 
she is a proud, non-traditional uh, <laughs> shaped woman for a WWE program, and that empowers people. Who else was nominated? Uh, I don't know. I mean, you can look at the pictures of the people to, <laughs> to get a sense of right, the okay. cynical Fair enough. Uh, thing. Like, it's okay not to look perfect, is essentially... Fair enough. That they've, yeah, they've done that, and they've called it Game Changer, and it's absolutely patronising. That, that is any... awfully patronising. Yeah. <laughs> That's really, really awfully patronising. To say, oh, just because you don't look like everyone else that we've been putting on TV for the last 100 years, you're a game changer. That's that's awfully patronising. It, yeah, it's quite that's, intellectually insulting. That's gross. And it's it's more uh, it's more like WWE are one of the, the leading proponents of creating that body image <laughs> over decades. Yes. And, and now they're like, yeah, but we're doing it differently now. <laughs> Way change. Rewriting history. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then Raw was uh, nominated for For a, what? It was like, I don't know, best entertainment show, and it was in there with Walking Dead. I was like, okay, fair <laughs> enough. Walking Dead is also kind of logically flawed <laughs> a lot of the time and frustrating. Uh, but yes, just, 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 were, just. Were Glow not available for, like, know. best show? Does I it have to know. be on cable television? I have no idea. I don't care either, really. It's the E People's Choice Awards. People are stupid sometimes, and it's E. It's, it's well, suppose, very suppose, like, Nikki's on E, because that's what Total Divas is on. Bella's as well, yeah. yeah and Bella's, yeah. So I guess and Naya is on Total uh, Divas. Yeah, I yeah. suppose, actually. So that maybe makes sense then, and they've just got the connection with WWE to put them in there. Maybe yeah. it all makes sense, but really. But the, the commentators were putting it over like crazy. Did you see, when we were fetching images earlier for Raw, did you see one of the galleries on there? I did not. Well, Naya Jax and Nikki Bella were in attendance at CurvyCon. Curvy Con. Curvy Con. I had no idea such a thing was on. Was that what was competing against Wrestling Media Con? Like you could go to one yeah, or the other. Yeah. Uh, and there was a little photo album from that, and it just seemed like a panel discussion. And it was like Curvy Con. I was like, okay, you know, whatever. These are things sponsored by, and it was like brought to you by. I was like, oh, okay, it's just a big marketing exercise. Cool. It's all, yeah. It's, so Mac Dolphman were backstage after this, and Baron Corbin is kind of apologising to his fellow heels, saying, like, you know, because. Seth Rollins has a law degree now. I've got to give you, got to give well, them li- a title difference. What I like this is that Se- uh, Baron didn't say that was the reason. Mm. He just like, hey guys, like you know, I've got my reasons for why they didn't have because Baron would have been in trouble with the law, and he didn't want to just blame it and didn't want to like say that I'm saving my own skin here. So he's like, hey, I've got my reasons. Like you know, there are things out of my control. But they've now got a tag title shot at Hell in a Cell. So it's going to be Dolphin Drew versus Dean and Seth. Which is an announcement that I would have liked, I think would have been a lot more effective at least, done in the ring and, you know, which we're going to fight you at. But yeah, I guess narrative, well, narratively, you just set it up better. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so that's how you would deliver it. WWE, <laughs> narratively, you would just set it up better. Uh, Braun, this is the first time for me, I could be totally wrong though, because I do tune out a lot of stuff, <laughs> that Braun said that it's going to be Hell in a Cell with him and Roman. I'm almost certain that's been for the last couple of weeks. I swear it was always at Hell in a Cell. Yeah, I'm wanting to be wrong there. And he goes, I'm off big dog hunting. And Baron's like, what does that mean? He's like, what do you think it means, you idiot? Of course he's going after Roman. He's going to beat up production staff and And throw around pipes. Yeah, Cause more of a riot than the Riot Squad Mm. did. Because they're right on the wall. Uh, Ronda Rousey and Natalia teamed against Alexa Bliss and Mickey James. And, well, Alicia Fox accompanied them to the ring as kind of like... Uh, a camp disco ball sailor. Yep. Whatever she was wearing. I mean, it's th- at this point, there is no need for Alicia to be out there Mickey's with back. Them. Yeah, I was going to Mickey's there now. We don't need Foxy with the team. You but... know what? At least they've they've committed to it and they don't just, <laughs> they haven't just dropped it. Dropped it, yeah. But just like, have Ronda brutally injure her then yeah, and, and write her out of the team that way. Yeah, so they don't really need to... Be, uh, she doesn't really need to be there. There was a funny moment at the start of this, though. So it, was, it started off with Natty and Alexa, and then Natty tags in Ronda, and Alexa legs it across the ring to tag yeah. in Mickey James. And Mickey just has the look in the face and like, are you kidding me? Yeah, I, really I, nice. I enjoyed this match. I yeah. really like uh, uh, Bliss. There, there was a spot when... So Natalie's being worked over. Bliss goes over to Rousey and just slaps Rousey on the apron. Yeah. And Ronda goes, no. <laughs> and, and runs after her, yeah. chases Bliss around the outside. Bliss runs back into the ring, straight into 
uh, Natalie who kind of picks her up and Ronda Rousey runs back in and does a kind of heart attack they, thing. They do the heart attack. They put yeah. it over. It's like, what a lovely tribute to Jim the Anvil Neidhart. I thought it was an awesome spot. Why wasn't that the finish then? Uh, because, I, because, so come back after the break, still working over Natalia. Hot tag's made. Ronda runs in. But they don't actually go the hot tag route. Bliss and... Bliss and Mickey James get the upper hand and work over Ronda's ribs. Yeah, they're putting it over that she's going to have injured ribs because Alexa threw her into the stairs last week. So Ronda's not going into Hell in a Cell 100%. Yeah, and that's and it's it's needed. Like Ronda is has that kind of Braun Strowman esque presence. Where how do you beat her? She's mm. been built up so strong. So to give her a weakness, some an injury to work around helps play into the story. Makes it buy into Bliss possibly winning more. And I like this as well, because they're putting it over that Ronda's the baddest woman on the planet, but Alexa is smarter. And so, like, Ronda's this sort of hothead that just wants to go in and throw hands, but Alexa's kind of, like, working around this. And I think that's actually quite a nice little story to tell to go into the match. Yeah, uh, but Ronda uh, makes Mickey James tap with the armbar, and the as they're celebrating... Alex just runs in and does a little super kick thing to, to her ribs. ribs. Yeah. Now I I really I like this match because this was the most organic anyone was cheered on the show. Oh when yeah. When Ronda got in and she started getting worked over, the crowd would have, like really like Ronda Ronda willing her to get herself out of this. I was like, that's a star reaction. Yeah. People are emotionally empathetic here. When you push people as stars, they get oh, over yeah. as stars. Like, I, I go back to this one a lot. When they debuted The Shield, they debuted The Shield as stars. You lose like, for like six months. They were like, you need to like pay attention to these guys. These guys are stars and they are going to, you are, you were going to want to buy these guys T-shirts like next week. That's what. That's essentially their debut. They said you're going to love these guys. Ronda came in. They were like, you are going to love it. You are going to want to buy her T-shirt. Point. Like I have wanted to buy a Ronda T-shirt because I'm like I'm so into Ronda and I think she's awesome mm. because she, they pushed her as a star and she feels like a genuine star. Totally. They can do it when they want to. Um. So on this variety show. Yeah. Uh. The. the and, and afterwards, backstage, they. Is Charlie Caruso yes. has an interview with Natalia and Ronda. And Ronda cut a pretty good promo. It's great. Very short. Short and sweet. Yeah, just that I've never pulled out of a fight. Like, you know, I don't care if my ribs hurt. Yeah. So my one little change I'd do is I really liked Alexa Bliss winning with the arm bar mm. and looking at Ronda. So why not sell an arm injury? Yeah. And, and, you, can, and you can tell the story of... Bliss is going to meet beat Ronda with her own move, like the ultimate insult. Yeah, that's good. And then, like, you know, you can have a spot where Ronda is in the armbar, she's crying, but then she, like, brings it was, back and lifts the big her power up bomb and thing. power bombs yeah. her out. I mean, they'll yeah. probably still do that spot, like, but it's... But um, it's not the story, it, though. Yeah, no, yeah. I know, yeah. Uh, Becky Lynch and Charlotte video package. Mm -hmm. uh, Braun, Becky, Becky's the best. Yep. Yeah, uh, Braun then running around, beating up random people backstage, screaming for Roman. Then we got the Elias and McFoley segment. And at the end of that segment... Uh, Foley says Stephanie's let me book one match and that one match <laughs> well yeah this is the thing so like we didn't really get into this at the start but the whole point of the reason why Foley is in Hell in a Cell is because it's the 23rd he lives just down the road from Connecticut so he went to Stephanie McMahon's office and they don't have this good relationship but he wanted to have a role at Hell in a Cell and Stephanie was she was so gracious so gracious that she let him have this moment. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, Steph. This, uh, to have this moment inside Hell in a Cell. So it's got actually nought to do with Roman and Braun. It's just got more to do with Stephanie emasculating Foley even more. Um, some things never change. Uh, but also, yeah, she also allowed him to book one more match, you know, just because she's allowed. Thank you, Steph. Thank you so much. And this is what he decided to do was to book a alliance against, and I quote, the extraordinary man who will do extraordinary things, which I'm pretty sure they said about 12 times in the space of two minutes in this match. It's, it's my least favourite of the monikers that they give people. The extraordinary man who's always on hand <laughs> to be randomly booked into a match on Raw. Yeah. Uh, I, uh... Yeah, it's Finn, but Finn, the way they use Balor is so lazy. When did he last have a storyline? When did he last have a feud? Mm. He's just been used Baron. for other people's matches. He's in a feud with Corbin. Yeah, I guess so. That, guess that went so. on like five months or so, didn't it? Yeah. And then before that, it was... I feel like that was a very background thing. Oh, it's totally a background thing. It might as well have been on the pre-show. Um, like, when was Balor's last feud of substance? I suppose that would be the Seth Rollins-Miz three-way thing, which is actually very good. Yeah, I suppose. But so that's, that, you yeah. know, that's months ago. Yeah. Uh, 
Yes, so the, the, God, I've got one match I can book. <coughs> oh my God. And I'm involved in the Braun Strowman Roman Reigns storyline. Elias, Elias and Finn Balor. <laughs> It was, I, I thought it was a bit of a slow match. I felt the crowd were quiet as well. Crowd weren't amazing for the night, but it, they had a lot of video packages to sit through. I, I, again, I don't think it's the video packages because they weren't this loud. They weren't that very loud at the start of the night. Again, like last week, they just popped for the, the stars. They popped for Triple H, they popped for Foley, and they popped for Ronda. Mm. And that was more or less, and The Shield. And that was more or less about it. Well, it uh, wasn't a good show. Like it WWE wasn't a good gave show. them very little to Very to little, get come absolutely, alive for. yeah. And this is, it, it, this the crowd reacted to this for exactly what it was. It was a throwaway match that's a, that towards the end of hour three, and they, you know they're tired, they're out of, they're out of steam, yeah. and it was a pretty boring match. Balor missed the coup de gras, but then rolled up Elias and he won. Not much of a match. Elias looked like ah oh, damn it. Um, oh, this is really gonna just, like stop my career moving forward now. I guess I just both guys been used very weirdly at the moment yeah like this is the other thing with Balor as well and again as I said I've not seen SummerSlam I've only seen bits and pieces of it. I've seen the oh, AJ well, actually. I've seen the AJ <laughs> Joe match but Balor from what I can gather had one yeah. of the cooler moments of it he came out as the demon and beat uh, Corbin in like 60 seconds right yes yeah well, so, yeah it was, it was quick yeah. so you meant to be like whoa what a big moment for Balor and then he's had now out, out of the back of that he lost to Elias the week following if I remember correctly so it was honestly oh, lost to Corbin rather it was honestly one of the best moments and, and sort of showcases at SummerSlam and it's just like uh, the Royal Rumble where he stayed in there for ages or that great match with Seth Rollins at the start of the year as well and it, it's in that same group as Kevin Owens where WWE keep setting up stuff where you're like okay i'm here i just need you to follow through with it and then they get distracted by bella twins yeah they get distracted by bella twins or they just scrap it after a week and start booking them into repetitive feuds because after that finn bella had a cracking match the next night finally got his universal championship oh that's right with roman 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 reigns and you're like okay summer sam one of the best moments next night Goes the distance with Reigns and just misses out on the title. There were moments where the crowd w- thought he would win off mm. a sling blade. <laughs> it was a, it was a really fun like match. Like he's crashy. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it's just they've done nothing with him. So that that's my earlier comments about Owens, as promising as it is. Like, there's no track record of, of no. WWE following Absolutely through not. with this stuff. Bobby Lashley in a <laughs> clip from earlier in the day. Yeah, and then Leo Rush walks in. So he's working out in the gym, Bobby Lashley. And he's got his, his big headphones. headphones on. And, like, Leo Rush comes in and does some Leo Rush stuff. Like, talking about he's the man of the hour, he's this and the other, and he's, like, hyping him up. And then Bobby just goes, you not see him working out? And then Leo's like, oh, I thought I could be your hype man. He's like, well, go on then. Well, Bobby Lashley's, like, angry. And then when Leo says that, Bobby whacks him on the back and goes, my man. <laughs> and then starts training again, and Leo motivates him. Yeah. So, so is, is Leo Rush now Bobby Lashley's manager? Certainly seemed that way to me. Or a hype man. Uh, and that's like, that's a good idea. A good idea. If Bobby's not treating it like it's... That's he's, the problem. If, he, if Bobby's going to treat him like he's some dork that's just following him around, then that's not a good thing. But right. if it's like he is a legitimate hype man and it's a good role for Leo, because Leo's also a very solid wrestler. He's a very good wrestler, in fact. You could do lots of stuff with that. But if, if Bobby's going to treat this like a joke, then... I'm not into this. Yeah. Because I just feel it it just buries Leo then. Yeah, I don't know who's looking at Bobby Lashley and saying this is a comedy act guy. Because that's what we've got him for the last, like, well, since the, <laughs> since, the since he sisters, debuted. Since the sisters. Yeah. Uh, but Lashley is kind of getting over to, to a degree, but it's just, it, he could be so much more. Yeah, I know. And the main event was Braun Strowman and Roman Reigns. Uh, Braun calls out Reigns, still can't find him. Reigns appears on the announcer's table, and they they have a brawl. They Why didn't Roman just come out when he called him out? Like, it was really weird that he was like, Braun comes out, and he calls out Roman, and Roman doesn't show up. And I'm like, what was? Mm. Like, why aren't you coming out to fight this man? You're like, you're fighting him in six days. 
come on out. And then eventually he did. It was just really odd that he didn't come out when Braun first challenged him. Also, and this is a very minor point, so I just, but I did want to make mention of it. When Roman was challenging for the Universal Championship, he was just like, this title, this title needs to be on TV every single yeah. week. It, was barely feature- it wasn't featured last week. It was barely featured on this show as well. I forgot he was champion at one point. He doesn't even carry it, does he? Oh, he had it at this final segment, oh, but he? like I, you wouldn't have seen it because the cameras barely showed it. Mm. Uh so yeah, the, and Strowman goes up to meet him on the announcer's table. They brawl. This was so unorganic as well. This was hilariously so WWE. Mm. Because Roman comes out and he stands on the commentary table. But because they're going to do a spot with the table, the commentators weren't there. They'd already moved to a new area. And you could see them on camera occasionally, not facing them and looking at monitors, just like in sort of like a little backstage area. Because they were providing commentary the entire mm. time. And it's just one of those weird things in the world of WWE where you're like, this is fake. Yeah. And I know this is fake. Yeah, and you, that, that's the and worst thing you can make re- wrestling see. Yeah, you're not hiding this from being fake. Like yeah. Michael Cole and Renee Young and Corey Graves are acting like they're at the commentary table, but we can see they're not. And now we can also see them not even watching the action. Renee's officially on the, the announce team now. I know. Well, I, I made this joke yesterday, but who are we going to make fun of? Because coach has gone, book has gone. We've got no one to make fun of on, like, for making poor commentary choices. Because Renee does a solid job. I I can't make fun of solid Renee. I don't know. I think solid would imply g- good, gooder. <laughs> it would be gooder if it was solid. I think this is acceptable. She is. She is on commentary. I can. She, th- that's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's there. She is on commentary. Yeah. She'll she'll grow into it. She'll eventually, you know, she'll she'll work it out. But but no, it's but it's not like even if she does work it out, and I think she she's probably already there already. That the confines of that role of the third person on the announce team, we, we're going to end up hating her eventually. Well, I, I mean, I don't want to be that guy. So I, I'm, I'm still hopeful for Renee because I really like Renee. And I, we and, hated and, Coach. We hated Booker. Yeah, I know. But She's just going to turn into re- a Todd Phillips or a why, Michael Cole. The reason why we don't like Coach and the reason why we didn't like Booker is because they just said stupid things that added nothing. Like, they thought, I'm saying something really smart here, like Coach with his word of the mm. hour or Booker saying, like, you're looking jacked, man, you know, all these sorts of things. Like, these are things that we were just like, that's a really weird thing to say. Like, but Renee is just... She's just there. She's just there to say words, and she says the words fine. Like yeah. there'll be nothing. There's nothing about Renee, and I don't think I'm not sure that I'll beat Renee. That will be like, gosh, she is like Kevin Kelly come to Raw, or we're never going to say she's just as bad as Coachman. So, so sometimes I find beige more offensive than luminous green. <laughs> okay, if if that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So yeah. you were more of, uh, offended by the people who were dressed like just in regular suits at Wrestling Media Con, but Dave Meltzer in his fluorescent green jacket, you were I like... I loved it. Loved that, yeah, mate. Yeah, yeah. Good at choice there, Dave. At least it's something, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't want another Michael Cole on that commentary team. Yeah, a uh, female Michael Cole, no less. Uh, so it's... Yeah, that Roman and Braun, they... Braun moves onto the announcer's table to slam Roman through it, but Roman reverses, gets Braun up in a Samoan drop position, and goes off the announcer's table off the stage and through like this covered area that was gimmicked below, yeah. which was a great spot. Great spot. But like the crowd and me watching just went, oh, that was that was cool. Yeah. But like there's no real emotional response there. No, like, oh, wow, I can't wait to see Helen a Cell. Oh, my God. Roman just put Braun through this thing. It was just Mick Foley's the referee. Yeah, it was. Huh. Yeah, that was that was cool. Okay. That's because I feel, again, that this show has become a lame duck, we just need to get past this. Because the, what they're more interested in is building the shield versus the dogs of war. So all the build has been around these six men fighting each other, not Roman versus Braun inside Helena Cell at the pay-per-view for the company's, quote, most prestigious title. Like, it's just, it's there. Like, this show is just there. And there's not really a great deal to say about it. And it's Hell in a Cell. And it's Hell in a Cell. Which is like, should be the biggest blow off to a feud. But yeah. yeah. Uh, when you said Dogs of War just then, I was like, oh, that sounds like a cool name. <laughs> oh, yeah, that is. The- so <laughs> yeah. maybe it will get, maybe yeah. it will like it. I, I think the problem is more fundamental than that. I think people are not invested emotionally in Roman as a babyface, nor Braun as a heel. When he was cutting the promo at the start of the show, I really was like, ah. I don't buy it. 
yeah, yeah, I, yeah. This is this feels like the past. This yeah. feels like last year. Like there's no. It's not like Braun has gone heel, and that's a progression of his character. It feels like a reversion, and not in a good way. Like Tony Soprano becoming an asshole again. It's it's just he's gone back because he needs to go back for the story. But really, it should be character that drives story. It should be yeah. the other way around. He has turned heel because the Shield needed opponents. Yeah. So it's like you've got this one guy who people will organically, inv- and I've said this before. People are organically invested in Braun as a babyface, and really they're organically invested as Roman as a heel. And WWE don't want that to be the dynamic, so they've changed those roles around, and it's creating in just visuals where you're not really caring about anything because they're in the wrong position. Hey, man, that's just the story you're reading. It's just it doesn't. That's not necessarily the story we're telling. Mm. But they, I mean, they have been telling that. They have been telling the story they're telling, but the the characters are in the wrong positions. Yeah, tell that to Road Dog. So I thought this was, you know, a bad show. Um, yeah, but there yeah. was nothing on it that was offensively damaging. Mm-hmm. So that's that's why I gave it a poor. Like yeah. if it, it would have to be actively damaging to someone if it was a bottom so i yeah. give it a low two out of five yeah i mean i got a tweet again this morning uh, several of them to say this was the worst roar of all time it people re- said that last week i know but it, and again <laughs> like and, and that week. and that wasn't that certainly was nothing last year was actually quite good yeah but this wasn't the worst roar of all time either it was just it's a pretty boring show but i liked ronda i thought triple h's promo was good I thought foley's promo was good um I mean, I'd have given it a two out of five as well. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it, I think people are annoyed that it's hell in a cell. This is a go home show. Yeah. And actually, last couple of pay per views, the go home shows have been okay. Like, well, you, that's because they've go, been, come, yeah. they haven't had evolution or mm. super showdown that they're trying to essentially compete against. And that's only going to get worse when they've got the, the Saudi show mm. in um, November that you're also going to be competing against because you've got to try and push matches for that as well. Yeah. It's. Uh, Nice one, WWE. You're raised to your own standards, and now people are annoyed when you trip under it. Mm -hmm. Not that it was that high in the first place. Anyway, that's all we've got time for today. Please click the videos that are on our laps to catch up with the latest WrestleTalk awesome things, and this button right here, which will take you to Patreon. No, we'll do Apple, because we're going to talk about WrestleMediacon. We'll do Apple, so you will subscribe to the podcast here, which has exclusive intros and outros. It's available on other platforms as well. I've been Ollie Davis, this has been Luke Owen, and that was Rambling.